Hi guys, so my name is Caitlin. I am one of your SI leaders for Bio5B with Dr. Joseph. So for today's video, I want to talk to you guys about tetrapods, which is a topic that was covered in lecture eight. So let's just kind of get started with an overview of what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So we're gonna go over tetrapods and their unique traits. So we're gonna talk about amphibians versus amniotes, reptiles versus mammals, and just the different clades within both all of these clades. And then at the end, we have two multiple choice questions for you guys to kind of test your knowledge. And so if you guys wanted to maybe cross-reference the information in this video to the information in Dr. Joseph's lecture, um, this is, these are the clades that I'm going to be covering on in the Tree of Life. So let's get started with the tetrapods. So the reason why um, we're going to be really focusing in on tetrapods is because um, in this clade, we kind of see the emergence of traits that help us transition from the aquatic environment to now the land environment, right? So we're seeing how animals are really um, able to kind of spread all around the globe. So the first trait is the development of four limbs. So this kind of helps increase mobility so that we're able to walk. Next is ears, so that we're able to receive sound um, because we're now in air, no longer water, right? Um, then neck, which will then increase our mobility and, of course, visual range. Um, and the last one is that we see that our pelvic bones are now fused to the vertebral column. Um, and this just allows organisms to generate more force while you're walking um, and just makes for a more efficient movement. The next clade I want to talk about are amphibians, which is um, within the tetrapod clade. Um, and so you'll kind of see in this clade that it is still very heavily dependent on water. Um, and we kind of want to build on this idea as we examine each of these traits and we kind of see how there are two modes of respiration, right? We have lungs, which are really not as efficient as we would like them to be yet, um, to be purely just on land. Um, and then we have our second mode of respiration, which is thin moist skin. And so having this moist skin helps in the gas exchange. Um, but of course, uh, having this requirement of having moist skin means that you're still going to be needing to be near water, right? Um, the second thing I want to talk about is for that fertilization still needs to occur in water. So for example, in frogs, um, they often lay their eggs in water. And then of course, the fertilization um, with sperm and the egg needs to happen in the water um, in order to properly occur. We also see that eggs are actually, will actually remain in the water um, just for shock absorption, so protection and hydration so that the eggs don't dry out. The next clade is amniotes, which is another clade in the tetrapod clade. Um, so here we see this transition from being dependent on water to no longer being dependent on water, right? And we can see this in the, in the traits that develop. The first being a rib cage. So with the development of a rib cage, you get more efficient lungs um, just because of more efficient ventilation. And with this more efficient uh, ventilation or efficient lungs, you no longer need that moist thin skin. So we do get this development of an impermeable skin, uh, which does help in preventing water loss. Next, the most important trait is the development of an amniotic egg. So now we are able to reproduce without, the, without needing to be near a large aquatic body of water. And so the amniotic egg just basically provides everything um, from protection, hydration, and just like a place for the embryo to develop safely. So this is a Venn diagram summarizing the previous few slides. I'm not gonna go into the information on here too much. Um, I really put this in here um, just for you guys to uh, really as a study tip. Um, so typically when I am going to be comparing and contrasting a few topics that are very similar, so in this case amphibians versus amniotes, I like to make a Venn diagram because it helps me one, organize the information, and two, understand what is similar and different. Um, and so yeah, just like a study tip for me. So moving on to reptiles, we see that this is, the reptiles are actually a clade within the amniote trait. Oh, sorry, amniote clade. And so here we see the development of scales, which help with protection and just keeping the animal waterproof. 
Um, we also see that eggs now have hard shells, which does help with protecting the progeny. Um, when we also see that most species in the reptilian clade are ectodermic. So this means that they are cold-blooded and they tend to absorb heat from, the ex from their external environment, which does help reduce their energy needs. So one exception to this are birds. Birds are actually endothermic. So just to go into that a little bit more, um, you can kind of see that most of the traits in the bird clade are actually modified for flight, right? So a lot of these reptilian traits, such as tetrapod forelimbs, that will actually become wings. Um, whereas scales were for, being, for the purpose of being waterproof, we still see that purpose in feathers, but again, it's really to be more aerodynamic. Um, with lighter bones, again, reducing your weight so that it's easier to fly. And just again, reiterating that birds are endothermic. So finally, we come to mammals, and here we see that some of the unique traits are having larger brains. Um, we see hair, which provides insulation. Um, mammals also have a layer of fat that also helps with insulation. Um, we see kidneys, which remove waste and helps conserve water. So again, we see that reduced dependency on water. And mammary, gl mammary glands, which help with milk production um, and nutritional needs overall. So mammals are, for the most part, um, endothermic, and as such, they can withstand a variation of temperature, right? Because they're warm-blooded, and they kind of um, have this very active metabolism that helps them generate heat. And so because of that, um, they are able to really live in a variety of different environments, such as like, you know, very, very cold tundra, or very, very hot desert. You no longer have that limitation of climate in contrast to um, our other clades. So within the mammalian clade, you have, you are then subdivided again into three different clades. So I kind of wanted to subdivide these based on how they give birth, and that is also how Dr. Joseph did it. So first we have our monotremes, and monotremes like to lay their eggs externally. Um, and next we have our marsupials. So marsupials do have placenta, and they do tend to give birth very early on. And so those are animals like, you know, kangaroos. And finally, we have our eutheranians. Here, the placenta is maintained in the uterus and the entire really reproductive system is very complex. And so for that reason, pregnancies just tend to be longer. And so I just want to reiterate that this is not all the unique traits that differentiate these clades from each other. It's just that how they give birth is the defining trait. And so that is kind of why I'm focusing on that more. And so finally, we have our two multiple choice questions. So I actually didn't go over the information for this question in this video, but in the lecture eight video that Dr. Joseph posted, he did kind of go over this information um, and I thought it was important. So I'll give you a couple seconds to answer. What is the outgroup of tetrapods? And so hopefully you guys said dipnoi, um, lungfish. And as you can see from this uh, tree of life, you can see that they are the extra taxa and out group. And so for our last question, which of the following is not a amniote trait? I'll give you a couple seconds. And so hopefully you guys said thin, moist skin. So if you remember, thin, moist skin is actually a trait from the amphibia clade, not the amniote trait. Sorry, Clade. <laughs> so that's all I have for you today. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I left little pictures of this frog all around just because it was really for my enjoyment more than anything. But if you guys have any questions, please comment them down below. Um, hope you guys have a good one. Thank you.